that, guys? It is an absolutely gorgeous day. Over the top beautiful day. Here at the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the barnyard. We're somewhere right outside of Albany, New York. We have found ourselves on this beautiful Sunday morning, September 8th, 2019. So uh, it is time when I get to wear both of my non-existent hats. I've lost all of my hats this summer. Uh, where I get to bring you my Doomsday Sermon on that other channel and my Monday's Chronicle of the Collapse. And I'm a little bit torn. Uh, who, which Doomsday Prophet are we going to hear from today? I'm trying to make up my mind between James Lovelock and Dar Jamel. So I'm going to set the little dog down. We're going to go on a walk in a few minutes. And uh, I like this one from The Guardian, uh, James Lovelock, quote, Enjoy life while you can. Imagine that. James Lovelock, quote, Enjoy life while you can. In 20 years, global warming will hit the fan. And I think he means within 20 years, but we're going to be a little more immediate. Instead of looking ahead 20 years, let's just review the last, I don't know, three or four months. We're going to go over to Truth Out and hear from uh, what is the godfather of, the godfather grifter of doom called Darja Male, I think. The Godfather Grifter of Doom, self proclaimed journalist, Dar Jamel. Yes, uh, self proclaimed journalist, Dar Jamel. And he is kind of, uh, Dar is <clears throat> bringing, I guess this is kind of a roundup of the summer of 2019, which did not end in a blue ocean event. Looks like we did not get these, this dreaded blue ocean event, but here's what we did get. You don't have to go looking ahead 20 years uh, for global warming to be hitting the fan. Here's all sorts of reasons to get out there and enjoy it while you still can in September of 2019. So here are some of the highlights. <clears throat> compliments of Darja Mail and Truth Out in this roundup of disaster called Alaska's sea ice completely melted for first time in recorded history. <clears throat> All right. The country of Iceland has held a funeral for its first glacier lost to the climate crisis. The once massive OK Glacier, now completely gone, has been commemorated with a plaque that reads, quote, a letter to the future, OK is the first Icelandic glacier to lose its status as a glacier. In the next 200 years, all our glaciers are expected to follow the same path. This monument is to acknowledge that we know what is happening and what needs to be done. Only you know if we did it." Close quote. <clears throat> this reality is reverberating across the globe far beyond Iceland. Even <coughs> when no literal funeral is being held, we are, in a sense, witnessing an ongoing funeral for the world we once know, we once knew. July was the hottest month ever recorded on planet Earth since record keeping began in 1880. Nine out of the ten hottest Julys ever recorded have occurred since 2005, and July was the 43rd consecutive July to register temperatures above the 20th century average. 
In Greenland, scientists were stunned by how rapidly the ice sheet is melting. As it was revealed, the ice there was not expected to melt like this until the year 2070. The, the melt rate in Greenland has been called unprecedented as the all-time single-day melt record was broken in August <clears throat> as the ice sheet lost a mind-bending 12 and a half billion tons of water in one day. It is worth remembering that the Greenland ice sheet contains enough ice to increase global sea levels by 20 feet and it is now predicted that it will lose more ice this year than ever before. Also, for the first time in recorded history, Alaska's sea high ice has completely, has melted completely away. That means there was no sea ice whatsoever within 150 miles of Alaska's shores, according to the National Weather Service, as the northernmost state cooked under record-breaking heat throughout the summer. A recent UN report estimates 2 billion people are already facing moderate to severe food insecurity due largely to the warming planet. The other contributing factors are conflict and economic stagnation, but extreme weather events and shifting weather patterns are a large and growing contributor to this crisis, which is sure to escalate over time. Another recent study titled Adaptive Responses of Animals to Climate Change Are Most Likely Insufficient showed that many animals are no longer able to adjust quickly enough to the climate crisis. While birds are laying their eggs earlier as temperatures and conditions change and are doing what they can to coax their chicks to hatch sooner, it is still not enough to keep a pace with the dramatically shifting climate. Many more extinctions are on the horizon. Speaking of, beluga whales in the Arctic are now clearly in a downward spiral toward their demise, due largely to climate crisis impacts according to another study. Warming waters, lack of food, and pollution are taking their toll on the embattled whales. Over the past 20 years, their growth rates have been declining which means their ability to forage for food is now also compromised. It is interesting to see even mainstream outlets like People Magazine now reporting on climate grief, which the metal, medical community has already been doing for quite some time and expects to see a dramatic ramping up of climate disruption related mental health issues in the future. In Greenland, residents are already traumatized by climate impacts as they are coping with the reality that their traditional ways of life are clearly on the way out. Courtney Howard, board president of the Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment, told The Guardian that she believes the climate crisis is causing worsening states of mental and physical health around the world and says these issues will become some of the most important of our time. Quote, temperature change is magnified in circumpolar regions. There is no question Arctic people are now showing symptoms of anxiety, ecological grief, and even post-traumatic stress related to the effects of climate change." Close quote. In the financial realms, a leading economic historian warned recently that the climate crisis could very well become the trigger for the next global financial crisis by way of causing instability 
and massive disruptions in markets. Distressingly, a recently published study warned that a new superbug, which erupted at the same time on three continents, may well have been brought about from warming temperatures. The study pointed out how a drug-resistant fungal disease has now been made more prevalent by existing on a warming planet. Moving on to more reports from this summer. A recent report from Canada warned that British Columbia could see, quote, catastrophic consequences from climate disruption related events in the next three decades. These include more severe wildfire seasons, increasingly intense and longer heat waves, water shortages, and storm surges across the province. Speaking of Canada, that country's pediatric society recently warned that children's health is expected to be increasingly negatively affected by climate disruption impacts, including things like air pollution and heat stress. <clears throat> Drought-induced blackouts are now besetting the people of Zimbabwe, where some places are seeing 18 hours per day without electricity. Imagine that in the summer heat. Dams providing hydropower lack water. Power blackouts are spreading. In Harare, Zimbabwe's capital city, the taps have run dry, affecting more than two million people who have been trying to cope with not having access to municipal drinking water. In India, a stunning one million people were displaced and at least 270 killed by severe flooding from heavier than usual monsoon rains. Back in the U.S., New, York's, New York City's summer, I'm a little confused by this paragraph, back in the U.S., New York City's summer has served as a preview of things to come as an extreme heat wave coupled with flash flooding beset the iconic city. Uh, I have been in upstate New York at least. I haven't been in the city. I have to admit this has been one of the cool this might be the single coolest most pleasant summer I have ever experienced in my entire life up here and uh, spending my summer in upstate New York and New England. I may have had five days above 90 degrees since I got here in early June. Uh, I certainly have not seen anywhere close to 100 degrees this entire summer. Okay, on the other end of the water spectrum. A recent study published in Science Advances warns that mega droughts will likely beset the U.S. Southwest within decades. The study stated that the mega droughts are, quote, almost assured and will be on a scale not seen since medieval times. At the same time, by 2050, another report Warren, and, and all of these reports, I'm going to put the link to this Truth Out article, and in this report, there are links to all of these reports that have poured in in the summer of 2019. So you can uh, spend hours uh, chasing uh, all of these rabbit holes. Uh, so anyway. At the same time, by 2050, another report warned that snow droughts, snow droughts will become far more common across the western U.S. This is critical in that it compounds the aforementioned impending, I guess, rain drought crisis as mountain snowpack is vital to providing water into the spring and summer. 
a recent and critically important study, again with the link here, showed that one quarter of the total global population across 17 countries is already affected by extreme water stress. Lebanon, Qatar, and Israel, Palestine top a list of places with the worst water shortages as the growing climate crisis threatens more, quote, day zeros, days where major cities will literally run out of water. Meanwhile, sea levels continue their inevitable and accelerating rise. In the U.S., a recent report showed how 21 beach towns, including Miami, Galveston, Atlantic City, and Key West will soon be underwater. Speaking of Galveston, the state of Texas is looking towards Dutch expertise for assistance on how to construct what would be the nation's most expensive and most ambitious coastal barrier for protection against intensifying hurricanes. The Netherlands has been devising ways to protect massive parts of its low-lying country against the ocean for centuries. Now the skills it has cultivated are soberingly, increasingly relevant worldwide. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the oceans continue to warm as they absorb the brunt of the heat human activity is adding to the atmosphere and the warming waters are literally pushing Pacific salmon to the brink of their ability to survive, according to yet another report. <clears throat> Distressingly, a recently published study showed that unexpected marine heat waves are now becoming the norm rather than the exception, and we have some big-ass one of these blobs, these marine heat waves uh, forming out in the Pacific Ocean right now. Uh, <clears throat> Alpine mountaineering routes are disintegrating as glaciers and ice fields melt in the Alps. The ice resilient the, I'm sorry, the ice-reliant climbing routes in the mountains are tumbling down and melting away faster than anyone expected. Hmm. Greenland experienced a record heat wave in the middle of this summer, which dramatically accelerated the melting of the ice sheet there, meaning its contributions to sea level rise are in the process of accelerating as well. <clears throat> Meanwhile, scientists have expressed alarm and shock about the fact that the permafrost across the Canadian Arctic is thawing out 70 years sooner than previously predicted. Things are so dire in the icy realms of Earth that the country of Iceland is now preparing how it will cope without any more ice, something that country relies upon for its identity, businesses, government, and very existence. <clears throat> So now we're going to look at the fire report. What is the summer 2019 fire wrap-up? These stunning satellite photos, which are linked in this article, show an Arctic burning up in front of our eyes. In Alaska alone, at the time of this writing, at least 1.6 million acres have burned from at least 100 wildfires this summer. Wildfires in Siberia could well burn into October when the first snows fall, as at least 6.7 million acres have burned across Russia. Another report showed that due to climate disruption, 
wildfires in California have already become 500% larger than they were since the 1970s. And so far, California has dodged the bullet this year, but I am still predicting a major conflagration in uh, California before year's end. Canadian <clears throat> media are reporting that forests that have been scorched in the Pacific Northwest are not growing back as expected. This brings into question numerous species of trees' ability to regenerate as the fires get increasingly hot, burn longer, and scorch longer areas, larger areas. <clears throat> At the same time, yet another report reaffirmed the, the fact that even the rainy Northwest is now facing the inevitable increased risk of wildfires due to higher temperatures, increasing drought, and lower humidity from fire to air. <clears throat> By 2050, Florida, you know, where I'm going to be buying a piece of waterfront property next year. <clears throat> By 2050, Florida will have more days that feel like 100 degrees Fahrenheit than any other state in the U.S., according to a recent study. Washington, D.C. currently averages one week per year of 100 degree days, <clears throat> while by 2050 that could rise to two months. The same study warned that climate disruption will expose millions of people across the U.S. to, quote, off the charts extreme heat. Meanwhile, Europe sizzled under a record-breaking heat wave this summer as heat from the Sahara Desert baked the continent and temperature records toppled en masse. There are far too many records to name from that heat wave, but notable was the fact that Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands all recorded their highest temperatures ever recorded during Europe's second major summer heat wave. In Canada, the far northern community of Nanabut saw warmer temperatures than the city of Victoria, far to its south, according to Canadian News, quote, the source of the Arctic beach weather is a large current of air that somehow found its way north from the U.S. southeast, close quote, a much more common occurrence as warming intensifies. And so now uh, Dar Jamal is uh, sending a personal note to Book Hermit uh, under denial and reality. So Book Hermit, this is for you from Dar Jamal. Ever busy denying the crisis. In the last month, the Trump administration buried a large climate disruption response plan as revealed by Politico. Uh, the outlet revealed how the Agriculture Department prevented the release of an already completed and sweeping plan about how the government should best respond to the climate crisis. Meanwhile, in what could have been a slip of the tongue, although I don't think so, Trump's Energy Secretary Rick Perry said during a recent nationally televised interview, quote, the climate is changing. Are we part of the reason? Yeah, it is. I will let people debate on who is the bigger problem here, close quote. It's not just the Trump administration and Book Hermit that are fueling denial. It was also revealed how DNC Chair Tom Perez introduced a resolution in an attempt 
to kill a climate debate among the Democratic presidential candidates. Nevertheless, reality has a way of not going away despite human efforts at denial. A recent report showed that the climate crisis is already well along in causing childhood deaths and the stunting of growth in Australia and across the Pacific. Other impacts on kids include lowered cognitive capacity and higher susceptibility to the spread of diseases. And to keep all of this in perspective as a final reality check, the burning of fossil fuels reached an all-time record last year, according to oil giant BP. For perspective on the rate of acceleration <clears throat> now baked into the system, half of all fossil fuels used by humans have been burned since just 1990. Many more consequences are lurking just around the corner as it takes at least 10 years before we begin to see the impacts of the CO2 once the fuels are burned. And there you go. And if you're not aware of this from all the 10 million interviews with Dar on uh, in the Doomosphere, this is you know so many other people have interviewed Dar Jamail. I don't know what I could uh, add to that. So uh, probably won't be talking to Dar on Collapse Chronicles. But in case you're not familiar with this, Dar Jamel is a truth out staff reporter and the author of The End of Ice, Bearing Witness and Finding Meaning in the Path of Climate Disruption. Amen, Brother Dar, and thank you, uh, Truth Out and Dar Jamel, for bringing exactly zero hopium anywhere in that story. Not one ray of hope as we wind up what has been for me a very cool and pleasant summer of 2019. And uh, as I say, closing with uh, the wise words of 88-year-old James Lovelock when asked by a Guardian reporter, what is your advice? What is your advice to people uh, figuring out what is going on on this planet? Quote, enjoy life while you can. And I cannot think of a better way to wrap up today's sermon and tomorrow's Chronicle of the Collapse by joining James Lovelock in his advice to get out there and enjoy it while you still can, which is what I'm getting ready to do with the little dog. We are going to get out there and enjoy this gorgeous late summer day here in paradise in a collapsing planet. And I suggest you do the same. Bye, guys.